When it comes to monster collecting RPGs, it can be tough to compete with a certain multi-billion dollar franchise that has had a death grip on the genre for several decades. But Cassette Beasts is a newcomer to the genre that does more than enough to set itself apart from the typical monster collecting affair while seemingly appealing to an older demographic with an 80s 90s retro appeal and a perfect soundtrack to match. My name's Johnny Bueno and let's take a look at Cassette Beasts. Cassette Beasts essentially starts out similar to your favorite isekai anime. Your player-made character is whisked away to an island known as New World, where curious monsters and other oddities inhabit the land. But your character isn't the only one not native to New World. Essentially, every human character has also been isekai to this strange world, and they've all been stuck here for varying amounts of time. Nobody knows how to get back to their own world, and guess what? It's up to you as the protagonist to find out how to do just that. New World itself is quite open, with various zones and climates to explore that are home to the unique beasts that you'll be fighting and, of course, capturing. Although this works somewhat differently compared to a franchise that we won't name. We'll touch on the specifics of combat and capturing monsters later, but where Cassette Beast stands out is that your character, your allies, and the humans of New World are able to transform into the beasts instead of giving them commands like some sort of pet. This makes the game feel a little more personal as your player character can actually get hit instead of watching your beasts do all of the fighting. All of the beasts are stored in a neat little cassette player as well, which further plays into the retro vibe that the game has. And I'm not at all biased as a 90s kid in saying that I absolutely love this. Pulling from some elements of traditional non-monster collecting RPGs, you can actually form a party with allies. Uh, sort of. Really, you can only take one person with you, but it's crucial to do so, as most battles take place in a 2 versus 2 format. But each character does have a specific storyline that you can follow that tackles some pretty mature themes. Kaylee's storyline, for example, explores topics like a sense of belonging as an ex-cult member. Not to mention, someone literally gets exploded into a pile of matter, which I feel isn't something you'd normally see in your average child-friendly monster-collecting game. Eugene is on a mission to stop a group of predatory landlords who are portrayed as actual vampires, and as a grown adult, this is a crusade I can very much get behind. These storylines, the battles, and pretty much everything about the game is elevated by an absolutely outstanding soundtrack. It's been a long while since I've been completely enamored with a game soundtrack like this, and in my opinion, it's one of the most shining aspects of the game. The dreamy, ambient tracks that play when you're out in the open world promote a serious sense of calm and wonder, perfectly fit for exploring an unknown land. There's also a track that plays when you get into Harbor Town, the main hub area, that layers in some equally dreamy vocals that had me just stop playing the game for a few minutes to appreciate the music. Seriously, I can't emphasize enough how good the music is in Cassette Beasts, and it really does serve as the vehicle that helps elevate an already great game into something incredible. In terms of gameplay, Cassette Beasts takes a fairly open approach. You'll have main quests and many, many side quests that you can undertake at your leisure while you explore New World and capture beasts. Completing quests will net you experience to level up your character and material rewards to purchase items. Typical RPG stuff. Main quests do take a similar approach to the latest entry in a franchise we won't name, and that you have a few primary objectives to complete that will take you to every corner of the world. One of which is battling New World's Jim Lee, I mean Ranger Captains. There's 12 in total, and you actually need to go out and find them. They're not just waiting inside an obvious building, waiting for you to challenge them. I really like this as it promotes a sense of exploration, which is obviously crucial when you have an open world. You can get hints from people in town on the whereabouts of each ranger captain, but you're still only given a general area to search, not their exact location. The ranger captains aren't just some random people, either. Each captain has some sort of role to play in maintaining the infrastructure of New World, and that factors into how they fight. For example, the very first ranger captain you'll run into, Wallace, is quite obviously a construction worker, and his playstyle revolves around building walls to protect his beasts from attack. This approach gives the ranger captains so much more personality, and I think it just makes sense that they would use whatever craft they're an expert at to influence their battle style. The other main mission, which is much more central to the overarching plot, is finding and defeating the Archangels. Each Archangel has an incredibly otherworldly presentation, and I mean that quite literally, as graphically, they look like they don't belong in this world. These are bizarre boss-style monsters that, much like the ranger captains, will have their own special gimmicks. The very first Archangel I took on had a gimmick where he would switch places with one of his two effigies every turn. Hitting an effigy will damage you, so I had to think ahead to which position he was going to move to next. This also meant moves that target multiple enemies were off the table for this boss. It was a challenging encounter, but it was very rewarding to overcome. Next, I can't speak on a monster collecting RPG without talking about the catching mechanics. When you're capturing a beast, or recording as the game calls it, your character transforms back into their human form. 
Your human form has its own health bar that's separate from your beast's health bar, so if that's depleted, then your character's knocked out and left unable to transform. So you're essentially making yourself vulnerable to record a beast and add it to your collection. There's actually some risk versus reward here, and that makes capturing stronger beasts all the more satisfying. But the even better part is that you can actually see the catch rate on the beasts you're trying to record. This will go up when you damage an enemy, but it will also go down if you get hit while attempting to record them. Being able to see your percent chance of recording a beast is incredibly helpful in letting you know if you need to use a better tape, or how many times you're going to have to repeat this process and curse the RNG gods. Like every other monster collector, the combat itself is turn-based with some additional quirks. Attacks are used through spending AP, and you get 2 AP each turn. Each beast and every attack is of course associated with a specific elemental type, whether that be the traditional fire, water, or earth, or some unique types like astral or plastic. As expected, some types are stronger against others and some are weak to others, but Cassette Beast does add a layer of complexity to this. Attacking a beast that's weak to the element of your attack can add a specific debuff depending on the type of interaction. For example, attacking a water-type beast with a lightning-type attack will give them the conductive debuff, making them take additional damage whenever a lightning-type move is used. This also works the other way around, though. Attacking a fire-type beast with a poison-type attack will give them the fueled buff, granting them extra AP. This means you need to be extra careful when planning an attack as you may accidentally buff an opposing beast. So you better have the type chart open on a separate screen because there's a lot of interactions to memorize. However, one of the most prominent parts of Cassette Beast's combat is the fusion system. Through battling, you'll build up your fusion bar, and once it fills, you can fuse the two beasts you currently have on the field into a single entity. This will not only grant you a unique design based on the two beasts you fuse, but it will also combine their stats and move pools into one. This often serves as a pretty surefire way to get the upper hand over your opponent, and it's honestly just fun to try every combination to see what strange amalgamation comes out. My favorite part though, and this goes back to the music, is how the vocals of the battle track kick in every time you do a fusion. This hypes up a fusion so much more, and it just adds to the intensity when you're in a particularly difficult battle with an Archangel or Ranger Captain. From a progression standpoint, Cassette Beast will have you leveling up your character through battling monsters and completing quests. Unlike other games in the genre though, you don't level up your beasts separately. Their level is essentially your character's level and any beast you record and put into your party will match that level. I really like this as it eliminated a lot of unnecessary grinding when bringing in a new monster into my group, so there's no need to play catch up if they're underleveled. However, beasts do gain stars when used in battle. Every time a beast gains a star, they'll learn a new move, and once they reach 5 stars, they can remaster slash evolve. So there is some grinding necessary to evolve your beasts, but there are also items you can obtain to grant stars and alleviate this process a bit. Moves in cassette beasts are called stickers, and they can be freely applied to, or removed from your beasts, so it's easy to customize your ideal moveset. There's also stickers you can apply that grant your beast passive benefits, like reduced damage taken from a specific type, or a stat-reducing curse that afflicts an enemy when your beast is knocked out. This can be pretty handy for covering a beast's weakness at the cost of a move slot that could have been used for an actual offensive move. Or you can just have all of your move slots filled with the highest damaging moves possible because, if you're like me, the only stat you want to see go down is the enemy's health bar. Outside of your beasts themselves, you can also collect a special item through completing quests called Fused Material, which can be spent on permanent upgrades like increasing the maximum amount of healing items you can hold, or helping your fusion bar fill faster. These aren't entirely necessary for game completion, but will help the overall ride feel a little smoother. And it's also a nice system for rewarding completionists, who go out of their way to explore every corner of the world and complete every quest the game has available. Speaking of exploration, one thing I liked is how Cassette Beast ties actually catching beasts, a core mechanic of the game, into how you explore the world. You see, there are key movement abilities that make getting around New World a little easier, and you obtain these abilities through recording specific beasts. For example, recording a Bulletino unlocks a Flaming Dash ability that lets you traverse areas much faster on foot, in addition to letting you break through large rocks. Recording a Boltam unlocks the Electromagnetism ability, allowing you to pull yourself toward electric objects in the world. So there's definitely an incentive to go out and record as many interesting beasts as you can find. If you're a fan of monster collecting games or just RPGs in general, I highly recommend Cassette Beasts. I'd argue it's worth the $20 price tag based on the soundtrack alone, but it also helps that the game offers some solid open-world gameplay, fairly complex combat with type interactions and move customization, and some very charming characters. 
There's also an immense amount of replayability with monster randomization and permadeath options, so you could easily spend hundreds of hours battling and recording beasts on the island of New World. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like and let me know what you think in the comments below. I appreciate every bit of interaction and support, as I love making videos just like this. So, please subscribe if you want to see more, and as always, thank you for watching.